today we see Fast and Furious as one of the biggest franchises in the world. We were pretty big then, but like it put us in such a different level and worldwide thing. It was a pretty insane four month deal. The pressure was intense. So what was your relationship with Paul? He just came up to me. Dude, I love this car. This is just Altezza. This thing is sick. I'm like, what the? Surfing cars? Man, you got his attention. I have this seven bedroom house and why are you even staying there? You just stay with us. And I came to you and said, hey, I have a vision for a car club. He said, let's do it. Losing everything, losing the houses, losing the cars. And I wasn't ready for that. Good morning, everybody. Today, we are with my good friend, one of my closest friends, Enrico Delmar. He's going to explain us a little about his life, his passion, his story with uh, Paul Walker and Fast and Furious, why he joined Fastlane, the benefit of Fastlane, a little story about his life, his personal vision, and a lot of other things. Our social media is growing a lot. Please don't forget to subscribe, like the channel, and please comment each video. It helps us to grow. So can you introduce yourself? My name is Enrico Delmar. I own a company called Modern Image. We do a lot of high-end cars with clear bra, window tinting, wheels, ceramic coating, everything that you can want to do to modify your car and to make it look good and protect it. And that's what we do. If you guys have seen the Fast and Furious movies, one, two, and three, we did all the cars for those movies. You know, today we see Fast and Furious as one of the biggest franchises in the world, but Paul Walker at some time said, well, we're going to have a life before and a life after, because they realized they had something really big in their hands. So how did you envision Fast and Furious into your life and to help them to do such incredible cars? At first, they wanted for us to sponsor it and have it do everything for free. And like, man, we're a mom and pop shop, we're just a small company. There's no way that we can do that. So they agreed to pay us. It was a pretty insane four month deal. Basically, they owned us. They paid us a day rate. So it's 24 seven, no matter what. I remember like we would just be finishing up maybe 10, 11 o'clock at night. And then we would get a call like 1.30 in the morning. Hey, you gotta be at the studio or the warehouse at five o'clock to finish a car that one of the actors crashed be done by 7.30. The pressure was intense. So how did you deal with that pressure during the movie? It's just one of those things when you have to do something you just do it. Especially in Fast and Furious 2. It's my favorite personally. So Fast I, Furious 2? I love it. That was the most and fun Tokyo I've Drift, had. I love it too. For the scene and everything for actually what's like the true scene of the import world was Tokyo Drift. Okay. That was amazing. We had two guys there in Tokyo for four weeks. Most of it was filmed here in the US. Yeah. And in Miami, it was really fun. I was there for four months. The humidity was just intense. One thing though was really good is that I was able to stay at Paul's house. Production company got him a really nice mansion on Star Island with a yacht in the back. We had some fun there, that's for sure. Yeah, and talking about Tokyo, so we're about to sign Fastlane Tokyo right now. Oh, that's gonna be so good. that's going to be good about the car culture. It's going to be a little different than in the U.S., but apparently what they love, they love the American culture and European culture. So for us, it's going to be really good to open there. So how did you see the difference between Fast and Furious 1 and Fast and Furious 2, how people reacted on the street, reacted to Paul and things like that? Did you see a, a big switch? Before Fast and Furious 1, Paul was pretty big, but the movie actually yes. really just blew him up. He did Skulls before, so Rob Cohen, the producer of Fast and Furious, and also the producer of Skulls, came to him, really liked him. So like, hey, I want to produce a movie for you. And he asked him what he wanted to do. And one of the things that he said, I want to do cars. That's his passion. He loves surfing and cars. They made it happen in doing the Fast and Furious. He's like me. Yeah, you know? exactly. That's perfect. So what was um, your relationship with Paul? When did you meet him? Uh, how did you become friends? I was actually in my IS200. Back then it was called the Alteza and it was one of the coolest cars to have out. I was one of the first ones to get one. It was a yellow. I was pulling up and one of the scenes at uh, Race Wars where they actually handwrite like the, your number on there and he just came up to me dude i love this car this is just alteza this thing's sick i'm like what the you know i mean it kind of caught me off guard a little bit and just start talking to him our relationship actually truly blossomed when we we're doing the fast and furious too same thing as seeing him on set just start talking to him he invited me to come out and hang out and then i have this 
seven bedroom house and why are you even staying there? You just stay with us and you know, all of his friends and everybody was there. So that was one of the most amazing experiences that I've had. And just knowing him as a person was incredible. Just how genuine he was and good hearted. You can't talk anything more about the guy. He's just a great guy. So give us some anecdotes during the, the movies or set or outside because we talk always about the movie, but I'm sure you had a life. Oh, dinners yeah. and yeah, yeah, yeah. so I want to hear some stuff. So dinners were really interesting. He did not like like just people coming up to him. He was like, don't, don't look, don't look. Just keep on walking. He tried to do that. And if I was, and then he'd get their attention and he would come up to him and say hi and talk to him and just be present with him, which is really great. He's very just private. That's one of the things. Like if you come to me and say, hey, Paul Walker. They told me the story, yes. They, he, he, he didn't like it. If he goes, hey, it's Brian. And he's like, oh shit. And so he would come up and talk about cars, surfing cars. Yeah you got his attention. He was kind to everybody. You know, it was different because, you know, meeting the other guys like Vin and then Ludacris was there, it was really cool too. It's a really cool guy. Eva Mendez, that was fun. I don't know if you should probably put this on there, but like I did get a kiss from her. I was pretty stuck yeah. about that. <laughs> I remember his death. I love Fast and Furious. I love the guy. So for me, it was something I will always remember. How did you react to that? It just, to me, was unreal. I couldn't, I couldn't believe it. One thing about Paul, like he was never comfortable with being a passenger. He's ridden with me a few times and then also his buddy Roger. He was a fantastic driver. That was a factory tire and about people would just leave him on because it's the Cura GT, they want to keep all, everything original. They were going fast, but I don't think it was anything under normal circumstances that Roger couldn't handle. Yeah. So talking a little about the Cura GT, it's personally the car I'm never going. We have. I think 10 in fast uh -huh. lane. One is Raul in Monaco. He does drift. He drives that car absolutely like crazy. Changes tires every week. It's crazy. So what's your relationship with Carrier GTs actually? To be honest with you, it's my favorite car, my dream car yes. to drive. Me, absolutely but... the best. I have a client that used to let me drive the car all the time. He would ask me to pick it up from them in Coronado to bring it to Porsche and then take it to any of the car shows. The funniest thing is that I've always just driven it really calm. You know, I'm a little bit scared of driving a half a million dollar car back then. That was back then. Now it's like almost like one point five to two million. And I was just driving respectfully and just cruising along and he would call and yell out. He's like, get on the car. I want you to get on. I want to hear it. I'm like, dude, I'm not going to do that. If you want me to get on the car, I'll wait till you in the car with me and we'll do it. And he goes, no, 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 no. You're getting on it. If I don't hear this going off, you're never going to drive my car again. So I had to do it. And then this other time when I took it to the San Diego car show, I went in with a full tank to be in that show. As you remember, you have to have it under a quarter, yeah. a quarter tank. I called him and hey man, this thing has a full tank goes, well, I guess you're just gonna have to drive it. <laughs> just getting on the Carrera GT back and forth till I got it under a half a tank. So Raul in Monaco was telling me, when you really understand the car, it's actually not that hard to drive. Absolutely. And when we asked what was your favorite car, it's really interesting. He said, the one of you see is uh, that F40, but he says the best for me is a McLaren F1. And the same thing happened to him. So one of his clients was letting get crazy on the McLaren F1 and he said unfortunately today is a 25 30 million dollar car so I cannot do drift I cannot do that but it's a car with the best best wow. best for it he's absolutely right once you know and how the car reacts it's yeah. the best it's the most visceral the sound there's nothing like it there's no yeah. other car that sounds like it. it's a true f1 sounding car with a v10 with the top downs it's, it's just amazing and it's still a manual that's yeah. what makes it more incredible so to go back a little about fast and furious how did you come up with this design you know it's like it's beautiful cars but the design is like absolutely incredible so how did you manage to come with all that Trolley designed all the graphics for it. We did a few of them, like the Evo we did, some of the other cars, but the, the main cars that Trolley actually did the design were the one that made it, produced it, and installed it for the movie. And we sold a ton of these things after the movie came out. The movie and reality really changed our lives. We were pretty big then, but like it put us in such an, a different level and a worldwide thing. What was your favorite car during Fast and Furious? Eclipse. That's the car that got me into the car world. Coming out of high school, I wanted to get into cars and then I bought one, modified that, did all kinds of stuff. And that's what started it all. That's why for me, it, it shows a little piece of my heart. So why did you switch from this type of world to more the luxury stuff like Carrera GT, Bugatti, Ferraris, and you are the official shop of Fastlane. So why did you change 
from this world to the other world. When I started down here in San Diego and I opened up uh, the franchise here, I just love exotic cars. My dream car was a 911 Turbo. Had that in mind. It's my you favorite. Know. Yeah. I had a poster of it in my room. I've said I've always wanted to get one. And you have these goals and steps in life that you want and once you start your business or a career. But once I start making a little bit, I want to buy a Rolex. So I bought my first Rolex. And one of the dreams I did is have a 911 Turbo. And once I bought my building, two years later, I was just driving by the Porsche dealer and I've always driven by there on Miramar Road. And I was like, I gotta stop in. So I stopped in, not really an intention of getting it because I wanted a GT2 and talk to the people and they're like, hey, um, we can't get you a GT2, but we do have a turbo that's available. That was a 996 turbo. So okay. it was like the first- I had one know, too. Yeah, it's such an incredible yeah. car. I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna make that into a GT2 because I'm a two car yeah. heart. I bought it, did all the mods, put in another 100K into it. I took a big chance and gamble on it. It was a car that I could barely, barely afford to be able to do. You know, you gotta take a risk. And that's one of the things I joined the Porsche club and then and started marketing and everything with we're doing paid protection film into the Porsche Club. Now let's switch a little about fast lanes. You've been number number one pretty much. I'm gonna go back a little story. So we were at an event for the unveiling of the Urus mm -hmm. was now six years ago. It's crazy when you think yeah. about it. <laughs> and I came to you and say, hey, I have a vision for a car club. And I said, do you want to become a sponsor? You said, let's do it. And uh, we talk about the detail and everything. So how did you see fast lane evolving over the years and what did it bring into your life? It's just been amazing. It's just something that's truly, truly incredible. And I never would have thought it'd be where we're at today. I get hit up all the time to be a part of something, to sponsor something. I usually go, you know what? Okay, we'll just see. And then I kind of push it off. But it was something that's inside that like told me my gut instinct to say, let's do it. One of the best decisions I've ever made in business, especially, you know, with Fast and having me worldwide. I feel like it's still here and the potential is it's just unbelievable. Is, is unbelievable i'll be honest with you if i won the lottery tomorrow i'd still do what i do and doing i mean like for a billion whatever it is it doesn't matter because the community and the camaraderie with everybody like-minded humans that has a drive and pushes you and help you on difficult moments and i have yeah. the same story because i don't raise money we offer me to sell fast lane a lot of times i always say no the reason is like what do you want me to do after it's like i have my dream job this is the best job in the world traveling the world to meet cool people, drive nice car. But I know you had some difficult time in, in your life. How do you think Fastlane helped you during that time? I just remember when three and a half years ago, when I lost my fiance, Jamie Lynn, that day was, I can't even describe in how it felt. It was just unreal. Every day, I mean, there's some amount of support, everybody from the group, you, Dia, Mike, Josh, because it's everybody. When we had Jamie's celebration of life, the whole club showed up. I was blown away by that. It's just like the support that everybody has and truly cares for each individual. So let's talk a little more about Enrico. So what's the vision for your life? Past two years has been the, one of the hardest parts of my life. I felt myself disconnected with a lot of people and everybody, you know, just really stuck by me. You guys took me in and make sure that I was okay. Throughout just really helped me to be able to be better. And my vision is to be the best person that I can be, grow the business. My favorite thing in the world is to connect with people. That's the main thing that I just want to do. So you have this high with Fast and Furious, early 2000. You go really high, 2008 hit. How did you overcome that? Before then, I felt I was invincible. Yeah. Everything I like swung at and just hit home runs. Had three houses and nine cars, all these things that you can imagine. I was able to achieve like most of the things that I wanted, but I was still very hungry. Losing everything, losing the houses, losing the cars. And I wasn't ready for that. And that humbled me. I remember like sitting in my room, I can either lay there or get up and take this in horn and make sure that's, you know, rebuild. And from then on, just kept on rebuilding, rebuilding. It took almost five years to actually get out of the debt and actually start making money again. From that point on, I told myself I would never let myself be vulnerable to anything like that. You told me a couple of cool stories about your business. Can you tell me a, a story about the Panamera? The story with the Panamera is through Porsche North America. It was 62 cars and we had a week to 
to clear bra. It was just a full, like a front end kit, but we had a week to be able to do all of them. Just imagine like doing that and still like we have our day to day business yes. going. So we had a crew there, I would say at least like 16 hour shifts at the port to be able to get everything done. For me, it was like Fast and Furious over again, yeah. having to do all these things. When you have a task in front of you, no matter how difficult it is, it's there's always a way. Where there's a will, there's a way. So we got it all, all of them done. I love it. I love it. What was your favorite rally this year? I definitely have to say the last Christmas party. Oh, we left in Miami. Oh, Miami was incredible too, but also Arizona. So it's like, yeah. it's so tough to be able to see in which one was great. I came in, I was like, man, I didn't know how it was going to be. I didn't hear anything and then pull up the house. Yes. And I was just blown away. Almost a hundred cars out there. Nobody got lost. Everybody had a great time. And then again, when we got to the hotel and walking into the ballroom was amazing. How everything went was just so smooth. I don't remember like having like any type of anxiety at all to where like, oh man, what's going on? Miami, it was the slowest, best drive I've ever had in my yeah, life. Too. I was <laughs> having the police escort close yeah. down Collins Avenue, yeah, which is incredible. truly unheard of. We, they closed it down, took us to the other side of the lane and to pass all the traffic. They let us get on over the bridge and coming back on. Oh man. I'm going to finish this way. Any good advice you have for viewers today to become successful or to overcome difficulties? If you want to be successful, find a passion. Find a passion in yeah. your life and what you want. And there's a cliche saying, but it's true, is you'll never work a day in your life. Obviously, you're always going to have like these difficult times, but it's going to be truly, truly incredible and you'll love it. I agree. Yesterday it was a really bad day, but you know you overcome that. So thank you so much. Thank you. It was a great time. Again, thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. Yes. We're going to have a lot of new videos coming this year. So that's going to be good. It's going to be a little shorter format for everybody. And we have a lot of cool entrepreneurs coming. We also have a TV show coming and a lot of surprise <laughs> coming. We had 12 <laughs> chapters as of today. I'm about to sign Chicago next week. So by the time it's live, it might be signed. And we have also Tokyo and other chapters coming. So Fastlane is becoming something incredible. And again, thank you for watching. And if you guys uh, out there that are uh, you know, future members, I'm looking forward to meeting you.